today is today. How dare you come into my home to tell me rubbish. You slapped a pregnant woman. I am not surprised though. It is because you've never been pregnant. You don't know what it feels like to be pregnant. Barren woman. So, my husband has even told you everything about me. This is not fair at all. You are mocking me with my predicament. Ah, God, of course. He told me you are a witch and you keep losing your pregnancies. Hence, someone like me came to his rescue. Barren woman, Jesus, see the way I've been ridiculed. You are in heaven and you allowed all these to happen to me. Why, madam, that's your business with God. The latest thing is that the owner of the house is here. Our husband has been waiting since. Open the door for him. I am sorry for what she did to you, darling. She must apologize to you. I will make her realize how wrong she is to have slapped you. It is fine, baby. I understand her pain, but there is nothing she can do about it. She must learn to live with it or she will pack out for me. Please be fast with the meeting. I need to go to the bedroom. Where is this ugly woman? Margaret. Come here, please. You have cried enough. If you need a bucket for more tears, I will happily bring it to you. We need to finalize our discussion now. As you can see, I respected you enough to ask my wife to excuse us. Let's make this fast, I don't want to say too much. Are you really serious? Or are you trying to play pranks on me? We promised ourselves, for better, for worse, Franklin. Please, don't do this to me. Well, unfortunately, I can't cope with your worse again, because you have never been good or better. To cut the long story short, Kate is my newest wife, she is pregnant with my baby and she is not going to have the baby out of wedlock. The earlier you realize that fact, the better for you. She will be living with us till we pick our wedding date. By then, you can choose to be here or request for divorce. The main thing is that Kate and I will be sharing the same bedroom while you move out from that room. In fact, go and pack your things from that room immediately. Ah, Franklin, where have I gone wrong? I've been faithful to you. That is it. You're no longer the woman I used to know. You have changed. You smell now and you irritate me day by day. Sometimes, I feel like killing you, if not for the Spirit of God in me, I would have killed you. Franklin, are you sure you have the Spirit of God in you? You're no longer the man I used to know too. You've changed. Madam. Enough of this talk. Before I forget, if you want to enjoy your stay in this house, you need to go and apologize to Kate, for slapping her. You have no right to fight or insult her. And what if I don't apologize to her? Then you'll leave this house with immediate effect. And once you step out of this house, we cease to be husband and wife again. So, the choice is yours. Franklin. I mean it. <laughs> I am in charge. Oh Lord, why have you forsaken me? I serve you enough God. Is this how another woman will take over my home? I can't stop so low to go and apologize to that evil woman when she is clearly the one that offended me. I'd rather leave this house. I can't stay here. I will go back to my mother. I can't deal with this. I've tried my best, and God sees my heart. Woman, why did you call me? I have come to tell you that I'll leave this house for you. Rather than apologize to you, or live with you here, I will go out of this house and never return again. But I beg you in the name of Jesus, take good care of Franklin. I love him so much and I know he loves me too. I can't just continue like this. You came into our lives all of a sudden and turned my husband into a monster. Well, I've let go. I leave all in God's hands. I'll leave now. Well, you've made a great decision. I can now enjoy Franklin to myself. Have a good life, woman. It is not possible. You will go back to your husband's house. That is your home. You mustn't allow the devil destroy your home. You are now crying here. You will go back to your home and fix your home. Mum, I can't go back. Franklin already impregnated another woman. He asked me to leave. I'm suffering mother. Devil is a liar. I know what to do. But, know this. You are going back to claim your man in marriage. Devil must be put to shame. We must see the pastor immediately.
Sister Margaret. Devil is indeed a liar. Your mother already explained all that happened. But, I must tell you. You allowed the devil into your home. You are too relaxed. I will explain deep how the devil was able to enter your home. Pastor, I just need you to help me. I feel lost. I need help. Pastor, I need help. God is going to help you. But, do you know Jesus loves you so much? Pastor, but he left me. He allowed the devil into my home. No, Sister Margaret. It was your choice. Instead, you chased Jesus and allowed the devil into your home. He was there to speak to you so many times, but you didn't listen to him. I regret my actions, Pastor. The friend I had and thought she was a good friend suddenly disappeared after she ruined me. I believed her and trusted her. I took to her advice. Now you see. Devil is never happy whenever he sees people rejoicing. He always try to ruin their happiness and exchange it with sorrow. We as Christians must therefore never allow him do that. That is why the Bible tells us to be thankful in all situations, it kills the devil. When a home is made for Christ, it brings to life generations made for Christ, this will ruin devil's chances of having so many disciples that will perish with him in the lake of fire, so he is always going round, to make sure that such never happens. He wants more people to join his kingdom. Unfortunately, many people easily fall for his tricks. Satan hates marriage. He hates Christian marriages in particular for believers dramatizing Christ and the church powerfully display the gospel in their marriage. He knows that there will be trouble in his kingdom when two born-again Christians get married to one another. Satan thus aims to destroy Christian marriages because such opposition hinders the witness of Christ to the world. To counter Satan's attack we must understand God's design for marriage, Satan's strategy against it, and how to stand firm in our marriages. As a woman, you have a lot to do in restoring your marriage. Your husband has fallen deeply into devil's tactics such that he needed you to bring him back, but instead you also fell along with him. But thank God for where you are now. Now, you need to know some things before we go deep into this conversation. You need to realize that Satan is a snake. The Bible says Satan comes to kill, steal and destroy. The Apostle Paul urged the church at Corinth not to be ignorant of Satan's schemes. 2 Corinthians 2.11 Because when we are aware of the tactics of the enemy, we will be better equipped to stand against his devices. Be vigilant. Sister Margaret, you need to be at alert. You are the owner of the home. Do not watch while the devil take over your home. The Lord already made you the homemaker. Why did you fail in your responsibility? You need to be able to respond quickly. 1 Peter 5, 8 warns, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, and KJV. At any moment Satan could slither through your front door. Be watchful for the first sign of spiritual warfare and be ready to act fast. Sister Margaret We will embark on a spiritual warfare and call back the presence of God into your home. But before then, you need to surrender yourself into the Lord. He is a merciful God. Go back to the former relationship you had with Christ. Call him back into your life. Surrender yourself totally and tell God to help you. You need to fast and pray to God for restoration of your husband's soul, your soul and restoration of your home. Your husband's soul is long gone. You need to call him back with the power of Christ. It is after then we can go into proper counseling with you both. Sister Margaret, are you ready to fight for your home? Pastor, I am ready. Jesus will help me. Lord of heaven, I rest underneath your mighty wings of love. I dwell within your gentle heart. I know there is healing in your touch. Through the sufferings of Christ I can ask for restoration and trust in your goodness. You are my Lord, my Savior, my healer and my friend. I dwell within your gentle embrace. Precious Holy Spirit, my spirit is weak. By choosing sin, I have gone far from you. I realize now that I need you more than ever and I want to come back to you. Forgive me, precious Holy Spirit, for I have sinned against you. You are compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. 
Please extend that to me now as I go home to you. Refresh me with your grace. Renew a steadfast spirit in me. Thank you for forgiving me through Jesus' sacrifice. Lord Jesus, our merciful and faithful High Priest, you know the motivations of the human heart. You know that things are not right between me and my husband. Lord, there is hurt and feelings of betrayal between us. Even though I do not see it, you can see the path to reconciliation and restoration. Guide my husband and I to take steps of humility and compassion to build a relationship of trust with my husband. Make our marriage even stronger than it was before. I ask this in Jesus' name. Release my husband from the bondage he is. Set him free, O Lord. You are the God of mercy. Is there anything impossible for you to do? Set my husband free from the bondage and den of devil. Release him now, O Lord. Woman, you and your husband are my captives. You can't untie yourselves. No one can save you here. I am in charge. You are a liar. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved, he that keepeth me will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper, the Lord is my shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve me from all evil, he shall preserve my soul and my husband's soul. The Lord shall preserve my going out and my coming in from this time forth, and even forevermore. Devil, I know your plot. John 10.10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but Jesus has come for me, that my husband and I may have life and have it to the full. And so, I will kill you and your husband immediately. Matthew 10.28 says, And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Devil, you do not own my soul and my husband's soul. You cannot do us anything. Okay. I accept. But you have been forsaken by the Lord. You have no choice than to follow me. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Titus 3, 5 says, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household, because I have believed in the Lord, my household have been saved from you devil. We are no longer your prisoner. Luke 10 19 says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Philippians 2 10 11 says, That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Devil, I command you to vanish from my home, you and your cohort, vanish from my marriage, in the mighty name of Jesus. All right then. I will go. Wow. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you Holy Spirit. Abba Father, I give you all the glory. Pastor. That's the revelation I got. Devil has been put to shame. Hallelujah. God is good. Sister Margaret. You need to go and take back your home physically. God has fought your battles for you. But before then, I'd like to have counseling with you for a few days. After then, you'll bring your husband for another round of counseling. It is well with you. Stupid man, no wonder your wife left you. Imagine, you have become useless within few weeks. I am leaving this house today. And for your information, I was never pregnant. I thought I could get some money from you, not knowing that you were poorer than a church rat. So, you were never pregnant? You are an evil woman. Ever since you came into my life, my life has gone from good to worse. I lost my job, clients and properties. Just within few weeks. You made me send my wife packing. In fact, you must leave today. Oh Lord. Please help me restore my life and my home. I have lost so much ever since Margaret left my life. Help me God. Who is there? It is Margaret. Please open, we need to talk. Margaret. 
Thank you, Jesus. It is good to see you, Franklin. How have you been? This past week has been the worst weeks of my life. I have lost so many things. Life has not been the same ever since you left. Margaret, I regret every of my attitude to you. I regret ever chasing you out of this house. My life is empty without you. Please forgive me. Life has not been easy for me too. People called me so many names for leaving my husband's house. I am sorry for the way I acted towards you too. I could have respected you and listened to you. I could have been a better wife. But glory be to God now. Where is she? You mean that evil lady? She was never pregnant. She left not quite long. She came into my life to destroy my life. I am so happy. Indeed, nothing is impossible for God to do. God is great. I have defined Jesus Christ. I need to go back to my former relationship with God. So many things happened because of my carelessness. I didn't realize I was no longer in Christ until I lost so many things. I am happy we are back in Christ now. Sweetheart, can I hug you? I admit you. <laughs> of course. So, you're making fun of me now, right? No, dear husband. I missed you so much. My darling wife. Before I forget, my pastor asked us to see him before the end of the week. All right, your majesty. Let's go inside, please. Brother Franklin. So much has happened in your marriage, and I will blame you for it. As a man, you are the head of the home. You are supposed to take charge in your home. Being the head, you ought to make your family embrace Christ more, not you yourself acting as if you don't need Christ again. You exposed your home for the devil to come in. Brother Franklin, you were a prayer warrior and was the youth leader before you got married. You can pray for several days without getting tired, you partake in Bible studies and evangelism. What changed? Pastor, I wish so many people, especially men that are married or aspiring to marry to learn from my story. Immediately I got married, I became proud that I had someone to command, I now have a family of my own. I felt the need to exercise the power God has given me as the man of the house. I forgot my assignment and the reason for the marriage in the first place. Pastor, I was careless and carried away. My ego got the best part of me. I find it difficult to apologize to my wife even when I'm wrong. I expected my wife to be perfect and listen to whatever I tell her. I am sorry, Pastor. Brother Franklin, 1 Peter 3, 7 says, You husbands in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way, as with someone weaker, since she is a woman, and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered. Proverbs 18.22 says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. If a science 5.28 says, so husbands ought also to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. Brother Franklin. If your wife offends you, correct her in love. She has been given to you by God. She is your missing rib. You need to take good care of her. For you to enjoy life, you must pamper your wife because she holds the key to your blessings. She's part of you and you are part of her. Do not forsake God. Build your home for Christ. Pray more and do not be weary. Watch and pray, may the peace of God be with you. Please call your wife in. This is powerful, Pastor. May God Almighty increase your knowledge, sir. I am grateful. Amen, brother. Sister Margaret. You look good. What changed? Thank you, Pastor. My husband likes it when I dress up and look good. So, what made you change then? Wrong advice that came in the right way, Pastor. My husband is a fan of good looks. He is always happy when I dress decently and beautiful. It is well, Sister Margaret. So many things has happened in your marriage, and I will blame you for it. I have spoke to you about this before, but I'll remind you again. You have a lot of responsibilities as the wife. You need to respect your husband. If a science 523 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, 
as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. 1 Peter 3, in the same way, you wives, be submissive to your own husbands, so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives. While obeying your husband, and you feel something is strange, take it to God in prayer, and God Almighty will solve the problem for you. When you seek counsel from friends, especially unknown ones, you fall prey to the devil. Proverbs 12, 4 says, An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who shames him is like rottenness in his bones. Be an excellent wife to your husband. Be loving, caring, respectful and humble. I pray that the Lord will give you all you need to be a good wife and mother to your unborn kids. Let us pray. Darling, guess what? You know I'm not good at guessing. Talk to me, darling. You play too much. Okay, I will tell you. We are three weeks pregnant. Wow. At last. What God cannot do does not exist. Thanks for being a good wife. I am so happy for us. Devil has failed in our lives. I am so happy things are getting better for us. We've regained all that we lost and got it back in folds. God is indeed faithful. Hallelujah.